This is a very auspicious occasion and uh, here we have a lot of trade union members here today and uh, before I start sensitizing you as to the reasons why we are here, I would like to say that you know one of the facets of industrial relations is concerned with determining and regulating the employment relationship and in this vein I would like to extend kudos to this is uh, Dennis Thomas and uh, Mr. Julian Denim, who has worked first in the CRA, it's a national health authority. They have been very accommodating and they have been doing a good work. But now let us get to the business at hand. Are unions relevant today? What is the purpose of a union? Why should you be in a union? Does nursing need a union? Yes. Are you sure nursing needs a union? Yes. The employment relationship is set up in an environment of a superior and an inferior. The superior is the person who hired you. But you are the inferior because you have come here to get work. But not all your terms and conditions are equal. There is a lot of inequality that exists among us. Your rights, they are being infringed. Are you being treated unfairly? Yes. Is your rights always given to you? No. I want to go on to say, is your wages just? No. You have been working for so long. And how has your wages looked? Many of you have children, you have families. Many of you and your husbands are not working. <coughs> and you have to turn one. And is your salary reflecting that you are able to carry forward the torch? But all of this and much more we will talk about. Why is it so difficult to get workers to join a trade union? It is difficult to get workers to join a trade union. Why? Let me start off with Basel Pande in 1976 when he won 100 percent for sugar workers. At a meeting of the ULF, he said, listen, we won 100 percent for workers. Struggle done. So one of my, my lecturers at college said, after the meeting, what do you mean by struggle done? I said, listen, workers get X amount of money. No, they are no longer workers. They are middle class. They could afford higher purchase. They could buy land. They could put money in the bank. So nobody here come to fight. Only when workers' backs are against the wall, that they are willing to get the trade union to talk on their behalf. But once you get a little money in your pocket, you don't need the trade to tell again because you can hand your own stories. After that, what happens next? Many people are not willing to join the trade union. They can afford to buy a little car. In the 1917, when Pastel won 100 percent for workers, plenty of people were passing stools in the bush and using old house. They didn't have no water toilets. I wonder how many of you who lived in that time know about that. I grew up in the 1970s seeing that thing. <coughs> On top of that, we find that many people feel now that they cause a part of the middle class that they don't have to struggle again anymore. But I want to share with you something. We have something called the house nigger and the Willie Lynch syndrome. What they have to do when they slave on the plantation? They will do so and give the strong slave or the slave that influence a chicken to eat. And then they would put him inside the large manor house. And because he was inside there, he felt he was better than the other slaves. And then he used to spy for the landowner and carry news. On top of that, to the indentures also, he would use that way as well. 
and there you see the spy for Massa. Are you seeing the same attack being used in the work environment? They give the PCC a few hundred dollars in the pay packet. They give the helpers a two, three hundred dollars. And they feel them and tell you they are no longer workers. They feel they don't have to struggle. And they start to spy on you. They start to report on you and they see that you're getting involved in union work. This is what is happening here. They are spying on you in the office when you're trying to work and to three extra food to mind your family and study how much money you're getting in the bank. But they're not studying that hey, you have husband and children who want you to feed them. They spy on you. They have a Willie Lynch syndrome too. Willie Lynch condition is there. And they're just to fight against one another by telling them if you're more straight than that one, you're better than me. If you have a little color, you're better than them. If what we say, like, you have better here, you're better than them. That thing still happens today. Because some of us feel because we have a little color on the skin, we're better than other people and we are no longer working class. Many of us have a little color like this because of our rape on the plantation. That didn't come just so. Massa is so rape before fathers them and breed red children, red mulatto. Watch here, we are the results of such a struggle. So the Willie Lynch syndrome still continues. They are even Willie Lynch syndrome happening among the trade unions. Many trade union workers and many trade unions don't want to join the struggle with JTAM because they tell themselves, hey, they're better than them and they don't need to be here. But they need to join in solidarity with the trade union movement. They need to raise their voice in Christian no and to shout at the top of their voices that they care about workers' rights. Going on. Trade union busting tactics. Do you know that trade union busting tactics are being used? They map on you steady to see if you're coming to meet him. Because listen, the strength of a union is determined by the number of workers that it has in the bargaining unit. And if workers are not joining the union, this union will be weak. A union will only flex its muscles when it has reciprocal numbers of members. When you have a trade union, you need to rely on your trade union to seek your own interest in the trade union for you. Better wages, better terms and conditions, for bread, justice and freedom, and you don't have it. Spice still the macro in you. Your finances, the, the government of this country. All right, good afternoon, good afternoon, and thanks for holding on to cover this event. We want to make some brief statement with respect to the problems that are being experienced with uh, nurses and uh, nurses throughout all of the uh, RHAs. And in particular, we want to deal with some of those issues as it pertains to the RHA here in um, South. Now, before I say anything, I'd allow the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Registered Nursing Association to address some of those issues and then I'll come back and put JTAM's perspective and our position on that going forward. Let me uh, allow uh, comrade to address. It is Stuart, president of, yes, it is Stuart, IDI, Stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T, president of Trinidad Tobago Registered Nurses Association. Today, we are out front of the San Fernando Teaching Hospital and we'll be addressing that word teaching hospital in a bit to highlight 10 issues that we would want the Minister of Health specifically to treat with. And we are actually giving him a deadline of budget day 2018. Some of these things we would want implemented as of this week and some we would understand that he would need some more time to consult and we give them a deadline of budget day 2018. Failure to do so, he would find an environment that is extremely hostile to the Minister of Health. When he's walking around, um, making his public um, health engagements and, and speaking with staff, staff will, he will find staff of, are extremely um, um, adverse to speaking with him because he has shown the TTRNA the union that represents nurses, he has to showed them total disrespect over the last year and a half. And we would want to itemize some of these areas here today and begin to let our wider membership and the public know 
about these instances that he needs to address quickly. And some of those, well, first begin is the gross disrespect he has for nursing personnel, in our view. Um, and this needs to be corrected immediately. And we we'll want the, the Prime Minister to know that um, he may have somebody to follow Daryl Smith shortly. Um, this Minister of Health, unfortunately, has actually had the gumption to tell the Nurses Association to do not tell him how to run his ministry. Now, I don't know if he bought the Ministry of Health. I don't know if somebody gave him a deed for the Ministry of Health. But we want to let him know that that is not his Ministry of Health. He's on a contract position, and his contract seems to be coming to an end very shortly. If he continues with that action. We also, we also want to let him know that he made a statement to me specifically when asking him about a particular concern that the Nurses Association has. And he had the goal once again to tell me, do not call his name. Do not call his name. Now, just with those two statements, don't tell him how to run his ministry and do not call his name in mind. Something has to be wrong when a minister, and it, it, it seems apparent that a number of ministers are beginning to suffer the, 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 sh the chamfer sickness. And, and, and they, they, they feel so empowered that they could make any statement and feel they could get away with it. And, and it all comes down to something that Comrade Ozzy Warwick would have spoken to where what is really democracy and participatory democracy. And we cannot see that this government, especially this Minister of Health, understands the, the, the role of participatory democracy. So I hope Mr. Warwick will speak to our comrade shortly on that. Um, another issue, once again, the gross disrespect for nursing personnel. We finally had a chief nursing officer installed, now called the National Nursing Advisor. That is the highest office of the land where a nursing officer could be placed, the highest position you could ever attain. This position has been vacant for the last three years, finally installed. And the salary offered to that person is $15,000. 15000 the highest position a nurse could reach in Trinidad and Tobago, comparable to the chief prison officer, chief prison fire officer, is $15,000. She had to reject it and they had to come back with another offer. She rejected that, and they had to come with a, another offer. The offer is still insulting, but because she sees the need for the work to be done, she accepted, even though it was an insulting offer. Additionally, there's a, a conference in Geneva where ICN, C, um, International Council of Nursing, WHO, where they come together to form World Health Policies. And they did not even forward her the information for her to be aware of the meeting. And far less, they are not funding her to go to that meeting. Yeah? So, 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 so these are just some of the issues we have with the respect he's showing for nursing personnel. And we will be addressing it continuously. We'll be walking every hospital, every health center, because he doesn't appear to realize that, for instance, in San Fernando General Hospital, there are 4,600 workers in all. And nursing personnel comprise of 2,600. So more than 50% of any health worker staff comes from nursing personnel. And if he wants to show us that disrespect and feel he could still manage an institution without the support of nursing personnel, well, then he is sadly mistaken sadly mistaken. We also want him to immediately speak to the CEO of NCRHA and the practice of placing nurses or as daily paid workers must come to immediate stop today. Yeah! Immediate stop. After a nurse would have trained for four years, went through all, because you're basically working, eh? people have a misconception of the nursing training, because part of it, you're in class, but the majority, you're actually working on the wards. 
and they, are, they send you to all different locations throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And to a nurse, after four years of training, to come out without having to work, without a contract, has to be the greatest crime committed to nursing in a generation. Yes. Yes. Without a contract, you, the, the CEO of NCRH, has 42 nurses working currently without a contract. They come to work today, paid today. They don't come tomorrow, don't get paid tomorrow. No maternity leave, no pension plan, no, no benefit whatsoever. And imagine, imagine, we would have seen a Minister of Labor who would have come from the bowels of the labor fraternity, who would have championed over the years causes of workers and she is allowing, when we wrote to her, highlighting the situation, the Honorable Minister of Labor wrote back to us, at least she wrote back and told us that she hopes it gets resolved soon. She hopes that the NCRH resolve it soon. That is the advice of a Minister of Labor in Trinidad and Tobago, where you have, actually we have a nurse who called me crying, she doesn't know what to do. She's pregnant right now on this pool arrangement, daily paid nurses, and she, well, definitely she's not getting any maternity leave, no sick leave, anything. She's not sure when she goes home and has to return if she would have a job to return to because she has no contract, no contract whatsoever, nothing in writing. All they ask you is to put your contact information and start working. And these would have been junior nurses, eh? the most juniors of nurses, now recently passed out. They are being forced to work in some undesirable conditions. Let me just touch on some other issues. We'd want him to also immediately ring the relevant CEOs, call them into a meeting of Southwest, of where we stand today, and CRH also, and TRH. We know he has a little constraint with TRH. But let them know. We have requested via the FYA, Freedom of Information Act, to find out how many nurses are on the approved establishment. Every single one of them came back showing that they have vacancies. So what is the rationale for giving nursing personnel six months contract, one year contract? And this is on an uh, ongoing basis. You have nurses working in NCRH, 10 years on temporary contract. 10 years on temporary contract. Now, and in an environment where they, the excuse is that they have reached max establishment. Well, we have found that to be a lie and we'll be presenting this information to the public from now. They cannot say they have reached max establishment because we have the figures. So they have, and this is, this establishment figures would have been prepared over two decades ago. So they are using two decades ago establishment figures. They would have expanded their services twice full, and yet they are not increasing the number of staff at the institution. And you have currently nurses being burnt out, and then they want to know why nurses stay in home. But they are burning out nurses. There's no way one nurse could see about 42 patients. No way one nurse could see about 32 patients. It is impossible. And every death from now on will be placed at the feet of the Minister of Health. It is his fault for allowing the RHAs to get away with this. Yes. It is his fault. Well, let me, let me give you, because not all of the RHAs would have responded to our request for, via the Freedom of Information Act. So let me just give you one scenario. The most delinquent RHA of all, NCRHA. They have 236 temporary continuous nursing personnel working in that institution, over 200 persons working on a one-year contract. And that brings with it numerous problems. And these persons would have been employed over minimum 10 years. That's the average. So that, that, that's a real issue. As I said, the other RHAs who have not found it favorable to respond to our FYA Act, we have already started our pre-action protocol letters with regards to them. Um, two major issues we have and we'll be giving the media some documents because once a month from now 
we'll be exposing certain practices that we think the public needs to know about. One of them is the Port of Spain General Hospital and the San Fernando General Hospital, the main block. Not this administrative complex that was turned into a hospital, which brings with it a number of problems. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the main block where the majority of patients exist, which is crumbling at its seams, they actually have to close down several wards in the main block because the ceilings are collapsing, the floors are deteriorating, and we'll be showing these pictures to the public from now. It was so shocking to me that I went to the Burns unit. Well, they condemn that ward right now, the Burns unit, in San Fernando, the main block, and they are literally holding up the flooring with scaffolding. It is amazing to see. Holding up the floors with scaffolding. I don't know who is the contractor who got that contract, but I would have loved to, 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 to get the piece. <laughs> and then in Port of Spain, you all would know about the PAHO report on the state of Port of Spain, again, the main block where the majority of persons are. It is con it's a condemned building, basically. That building should have been rebuilt along with this San Fernando main block even before any consideration was given for building a Kuva Turin hospital, which was never on the cards. Never on the cards. Now you have to fight and find some use for it. When you have two collapsing buildings, and we have the documents here today, the PARO report was already spoken about in the, the, the parliament, but one report that did not come to parliament is the Mr. Gibbs report which we will be given in media to read. And it has some interesting findings in it. One of those findings is basically saying that any serious earthquake in Trinidad and Tobago, that building cannot withstand it. And your hospitals is supposed to be one of the strongest buildings because that is where you are supposed to get um, receive injured persons and that Port of Spain General Hospital, which houses the majority of wards, cannot withstand a category um, SEM earthquake, a level SEM or, or, or what have you. So we will be given in media that report. We, we don't think they have that report. It's for some reason, somebody put it in my mailbox, so we'll be providing <laughs> that Tony Gibbs report. We also want the Minister of Health to ratify, well, work with the Minister of Legal Affairs and Attorney General and ratify the ILO Convention on Nursing Personnel. We'll want him to immediately ensure the, all the RHAs follow the Ministry of Health guidelines on the referral and transfer protocol and follow the laws of the country, the Emergency Ambulance Services Act. Yes. Nurses? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nurses? We are letting nurses know it's time to do your job. Nurses have been found to be doing everybody else's job. Yes, and then job. at some point, when we slip up on our area, we, they are come down on us. And then we are left out on the cold. So TTRNA is telling nurses, it's time to bat in your crease. They are staff to mop the floors. Yes. To yes. <laughs> we, we don't business. Um, if you have not hired staff, in the evening and night sh shift to mop the floors and, 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 and take out utensils. Nurses won't be doing that anymore. They are staff to provide meals for patients. Nurses shouldn't be taking out meals and stuff. There's dietitian staff for that. Nurses, and also, there are staff to go on the ambulance service, according to the law. And nurses, we are reminding nurses to remain within your job scope because they are not um, too concerned about our safety. We just witnessed another incident. There has been over 16 plus accidents with those ambulances when nurses have gotten injured over the last two years. They have never compensated any nurse for injuries sustained in those ambulances. So we are advising nurses to go into the Emergency Ambulance Service Act and go into the Emergency Medical Personnel Act and read who is the category of staff yes. supposed to be riding up and down yes. on those vehicles. We call on the Minister of Health to speak with the Minister of Education, who has refused 
to give us an inter a meeting to date after 18 months of requests to demand USC students and UE students paid are uh, paid stipends. Yes? Uh, yes? So UE students and UE students must be paid stipends. Um, this is a measly figure, a thousand dollars. I mean, one of their um, rendezvous in Tobago at, at the Manganilla would pay for all these nursing students' stipends. So it's a very minuscule fee. It's a thousand dollars, thousand, a thousand two hundred dollars a month. I mean, no, I'm, I'm not bashing any other profession, but the doctors who nurses work along with, and very well, one of the consultant salary could pay for 15 nurses stipend. <laughs> so I won't go further into that. So we call on Mr. Fell to intervene, as he initially said he would, but up to date, we have no feedback. We also want the Minister of Finance to look into the national health insurance system. It's time the health sector has its own budget because we can't be waiting to fund um, purchase of medicines. It's, it's, it's really heart-wrenching for nurses to see patients dying on beds for simple um, medication and, and, and resources. It's really heart-wrenching and that, could, that demotivates nursing personnel tremendously. It, there's nothing more demotivating for a nurse to see a patient who could have survived die in front of them for, for minor equipment. So we say the national health insurance system is something that could sub supplement and we would want that place back on the front burner. We also want the Nursing Personal Act to be revisited as we told them on numerous occasions, nurses demand continuing education and minimum entry requirement in nursing must be bachelor's in nursing education. Um, you cannot be a profession without having the requisite knowledge and as a union and a professional association, we see that as important. So with those things, we will be asking every member of our union, every nursing personnel, all their fa friends and family to sign this letter to their member of parliament, asking their member of parliament to intervene on nurses' behalf, and we would be watching via the Parliament channel to see which member of Parliament have nurses at their heart. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll be watching. And those who fail, who fail to heed our call, fail to heed our request for their intervention, we will be letting our members say, come 2020, you do not need to pass in front of my gate because when I needed you, you failed me. So thank you so much for having this. So I listened to the president lamenting all of these issues pertaining to uh, the nursing personnel situation in Trinidad and Tobago. And what had is indicative of it is the total misplace of priority on the part of the government and this Minister of Health. That you can have nurses being described because of how they work and how they are treated as daily paid nurses, that you can have nurses for temporary for 10 years and not even issued a contract, that you can have nurses on, on what is now described as what? CPEP nurses, that you can have uh, student nurses in training also being asked to perform real work, not just training, but at the same time, the measly or less than measly $1,000 stipend for months going, they have not been receiving it, but still have to find their way to and from that training to provide a service that you have nurses witnessing the death of patients, which deaths are occurring for simple reasons, which those patients ought not to die at all. They could have been alive today had you had medications and so on, and the proper uh, medical equipments for them. That is indicative of the total collapse of the healthcare system in the country. And that if the government has absolutely no intention and or priority where that is concerned, 
Well then, we need to address where the root cause is. Healthcare system in Trinidad and Tobago, as indeed elsewhere throughout the world, is not about public relations. This Minister of Health is about public relations. And public relations does not see contract landed for the security of tenure for nurses, nor does it see uh, you getting proper medication in the hospital. I just want the public to know that every time you hear a siren of an ambulance going towards the hospital or going in some emergency situation to pick up a patient to come to the hospital, you're coming to an institution that is lacking really the type of response to treat with your emergency. And that anybody, Tom, Dick, Harry, Harry, Lal, Joan, Jean, Gemma, PNM, or whoever, you could be the next victim of a medical emergency. And that if today you did not join with the nurses in their call to make sure that the minister live up to his responsibility, you could die as a result of that. Let's understand that. But we in the Joint Trade Union Movement, we have taken a different position. That if we have to choose between the death of the patients or the ill treatment, continued ill treatment of the nurses, or between that and the minister staying in his cushy job and uh, exhibiting only public relations, are we going to choose security and tenure for the nurses yes. and, of course, a proper health care for the patients yes. in Trinidad and Tobago? What that means is that we are, we are going to, to initiate after discussions, because we have been having um, a number of discussions with the uh, TTRN uh, on this situation, and we are going to be taking action, quite apart from what has been announced here just a while ago. We are going to be taking particular and specific action, because you see they have lost their way. And it is the silence of the population in the face of all of these deaths. And then when um, something tragic occurs, it is the nurses who who take night to make day, they are the ones who first will get the blame. It is time that that stop. Yeah? It's time that we bring an immediate and screeching halt to that. So, brace yourself, uh, public. Brace yourself, because they are nurses. They are trained to deliver uh, a level of professional healthcare. They are not magicians. Yeah? And what is being requested of them is to continue to be magicians. I'm listening here, and it seems that they have far too long outstretched their mandate, their responsibility, overreaching to provide and to maintain a level of balance in this healthcare system, which the government is taking for granted. Yeah. It's time for that nonsense to enough. stop. And yes, enough is enough. So when action is taken in defense of their own professional uh, integrity, don't blame the nurses, blame the Minister of Health. Yeah. Yeah. But finally, Finally, I, I just want to say uh, with clarity to the media that if you give someone a job, which person asks for that job to provide a better quality of life and to ensure proper health care uh, to the citizens, and that person is not doing their job, similar that if you would have given somebody a job to do anything at home and they're not doing their job, it's time for us to begin to fire that person yeah. who is not doing their job. Yeah? And that's where, that's where we want to leave it from now. But we are going to be making specific announcements on May Day and on Labor Day with respect to this critical issue and indeed many other vexing problems that the country continue to face today as a result of poor governance on the part of those who had requested the job. Yeah? Thank you very much. We are in the process of being recognized. There's no, um, currently there's no majority union for monthly paid workers besides MPAT for doctors. But is this, mm. does, does the recognize your union to do negotiations Well, as I said, there's no majority union. There's no majority union currently, but we have applied and we are in the process of becoming the majority. Well, there's no other union in Trinidad and Tobago that has more nurses than TTRNA. No, they, they, no, 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 they are not. They are not. They, when they came over, the RHA is the only RHA currently, the only members or the only workers who have majority union status for their workers is MPAT from doctors in South, Southwest, and the NUJFW for daily paid workers. The remaining monthly paid workers, there's no. PSA is for Ministry of Health workers. 
but RH is a completely different being than Ministry of Health. It's a separate entity. So they have no, the RHAs are now going through that process of having majority unions. Uh, any workers are you representing? Well, we are looking to represent all nursing personnel, all categories of nursing personnel, which could run into over 5,000 person, nursing personnel. So all of the nurses that would have been employed at the ministry that are... Yes, either, yes, either retire or transition into RHA nurses. So there, there's only about five Ministry of Health nurses remaining, if so much. If so much. Um, three, year, three years ago, but actually the RRCB board is interviewing us right as we speak to go through our books and stuff. So that is in the, in the making. So hopefully, because um, we have everything in place, so hopefully by the end of this year, TTRNA would be, become the majority trade union for nursing person. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just say something about that. Because, um, yeah. Yeah. New bodies and yeah. mm -hmm. confident that they are going to get the majority. Um, they are going to be recognized as the majority. Well, the, is, uh, there are quite a number of manipulations taking place at the level of uh, the recognition board and uh, currently a new board is being uh, put in place. We are going to have as JTAM and Labour representation on that board. But quite apart from the getting the recognition certificate. You have a situation where there are problems in the nursing fraternity in the country. And the nurses in the majority have indicated that they would like TTRN to represent them. And so while that process is taking um, its good time to, to be completed, to be given the official recognition, what is really lacking here is respect. Respect for the nurses of Trinidad and Tobago. Because the government and the minister should be happy to know that there is a body yeah, seized with, um, with the responsibility of representing the nursing uh, fraternity in the country and therefore that they can talk to them to deal with and alleviate all of the problems that they experience. But that is not happening because this is a very disrespectful Minister of Health because he is supported by his disrespectful cabinet colleagues. And um, we have a way that we will treat with disrespect. You don't have to wait until you get recognition, um, official recognition to sit down and speak with the body that has the uh, moral uh, and authority given to them by the nurses to represent them. You don't have to hide behind that cloud at all. And let me just say, um, I, I, I just want everybody to pay attention to where the priority of this government is. Every time an announcement is made, that announcement has to do with something that does not have to do with justice and fair pay for the people and for the workers in this country, and in this case, clearly, including the nurses. Yeah? Yeah, right. thanks.